Wood United Methodist Church coming at you a little later today as I'm still struggling with this back pain stuff going on. Um, so please accept my apologies uh, for the late video, but we'll go ahead and do a Facebook Live here and this will be up on YouTube uh, shortly after we do this Facebook Live um, as we read through the Gospel of Luke in Advent, a tradition that was started last year and we're just going to keep on going every year reading through the 24 chapters of Luke in the 24 days of December. Today is December the 6th, which means we are reading Luke 6. Um, as we get started, just a reminder, one thing that could definitely be helpful for you uh, as you learn to reflect on Scripture and maybe hear it in different ways. This is longer than you would normally hear at a Sunday service. Certainly, we do at Hollywood. Um, just see what jumps out. Maybe grab a notepad if you want to grab a reflect, uh, copy of our reflection guide if you've printed it out, if you've got it on line. Uh, the link to that is in the description. Whether it's a Facebook, YouTube, the link is there in the description. We also had hard copies at the church. Uh, you could have got it on Sunday or you can stop by this week and grab. Um, it's got some questions that will help you, but the first one every single day is just write down what jumps out at you. Just listen to the Spirit and just say, hmm, that's interesting. I don't remember that story quite like that. Um, just something like that that really jumps out at you today could definitely be helpful. Uh, but today we read and we always start with a word of prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart and mind be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Here we read from the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. The man got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? To save life or destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. The man did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now during those days he went out to the mountains to pray. And he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came he called his disciples and chose twelve of them whom he called apostles. Simon whom he named Peter and his brother Andrew and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James son of Alphaeus and Simon who was called the Zealot and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him, to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out for him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. 
pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together. Running over will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. He also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourselves do not see the log in your own eye, you hypocrite? First take out the log in your own eye, and you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil, for it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone who's like who comes to me, hears my word and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had, because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell. And great was the ruin of that house. This is the word of God for us and for many, the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's a lot there. We call this the Sermon on the Plain, or at least the latter half of that. Um, I had to laugh a little bit when I was when I sat down to do this. I said, okay, Luke 6, let's read this. It starts right there out at Sabbath, which was kind of what I was leaning towards first anyways. Um, it's just an interesting thing to think about the concept of Sabbath, especially as my body is kind of forcing me into a Sabbath right now as I'm recovering from what's probably a slipped disc. Um, we really aren't good with Sabbath. Uh, we think we are. Uh, but rest is really hard to come by. And part of that is I think, I'll speak to my own self, there's a guilt, there's a sense of guilt of, of resting. If we're resting, we're not productive and we've got to be productive. And So maybe spend some time on that, if that's the first thing you really want to look at is what does Sabbath look like for you? Maybe if you're retired and you but look back to your life and when you were working, what role did Sabbath play in your life? And what role does it play now? And how do you find time and how do you fight back against that cultural expectation that you're always going to be working? Just think about the Sabbath because we came up twice in this one. It comes up a lot in the Gospel of Luke. And then we kind of move into this, the blessings and the woes, which sounds a little different in Luke than it does in Matthew. So you might want to turn uh, to the Gospel of Matthew and look at uh, his Beatitudes. But in particular, uh, these are interesting. We call the Gospel good news, and certainly um, some of these, the blessings, can be really good news. You know, whether you're poor or hungry or you're weeping or whatever it is. But those woes, especially living in a country that's very wealthy... Um, when most people who are watching this probably are wealthy by global standards. 
that's a little bit more difficult. And so look through those blessings and woes. Sit on the blessing first. And I'd say, what, what is the blessing that really is giving you life right now? I know it's it's already dark out, but what is the blessing that you're finding hope for? Maybe today was a tough day, and so you need that blessing. But also, don't be afraid to look at the woes and say what makes you uncomfortable. Right now, which woe is like, oh, I really hope Jesus didn't mean that. I'm mean, Just spend some time there. Um, and think about it because there's a lot going on here and I could spend a long time on a, a lot of this stuff um, and in the end there's a lot of things he's talking about there but love of enemies might just be one of the most difficult things for us uh, to deal with Jesus says it repeatedly Paul says it repeatedly love your enemies pray for those who persecute you right love your enemies love your enemies love your enemies um, I was actually in the Bible study uh, this past week, uh, Brian Getty, our lay leader, finished up a Bible study on the prophet Jonah. And the prophet Jonah, one of the things I realized I was listening to Brian teach, is it's this great reminder that this love of enemies is not something that Jesus did that was completely different than what Israel was. You see in the prophet Jonah who was sent to Nineveh to save Nineveh, that wicked city, a deep care for enemies. Um, so it's not something entirely new. We see it all throughout scripture. But I remember hearing, and I, I wish I could remember who said it once. It might have been Stanley Harawas, I don't know. When Jesus tells us to love our enemies, is there not carried within that an expectation that we would have enemies? Um, you know, we like to be nice and we don't like people to think that. I certainly don't. I'm some of those people. I don't like people who don't like me. Uh, maybe that's you too. What does it mean? Yes, we could talk about loving your enemies and how that's been difficult, or maybe even sometimes where you have somehow, by the grace of God, loved on somebody who was an enemy of yours. But what also does it mean of the gospel if Jesus has to give us commandment of how to treat enemies as though enemies are to be expected when we follow Jesus? So think about those things. Uh, think about whatever you want. Right? Maybe something else jumped out at you. Um, this will be uh, on YouTube here shortly. I hope tomorrow will be a better day and I will get this to you out earlier. I know some people really like it in the morning. Um, but be on look on that. Be safe, my friends. Enjoy uh, your evening. Hope you get a great day. And I hope you will join us again uh, next week as we continue. I mean, next, next week. Tomorrow as we move on to the seventh chapter of Luke. I think it's going to be a good one. Have a good night, y'all.